Okay, gents, massive game coming up in the Premier League this weekend. Arsenal against Liverpool. Huge clash between title rivals in North London. I'll be there for PST at the Emirates. Cannot wait for that. So we'll have analysis, reaction and much more from on site. But Nick, going into this game, Liverpool, five points clear. What are your thoughts? Because these two teams have met each other recently. We've seen how they match up over the years. And it hasn't been great for Arsenal against Liverpool uh, while Jurgen Klopp's been there. Yeah, this is, um, man, there's so much to dig into here. It feels as layered and complex, yet also straightforward because of what you're saying. There's so many angles we can say, well, listen, can can Arsenal, can Ars will Arsenal have to sacrifice what they do so well with their back four going forward and moving mm -hmm. the ball in order to stop Liverpool? Uh, the midfield to me will decide this game and I think is Arsenal's best hope in this yeah. matter, especially depending on how Alexis McAllister comes off that knock. But really what it comes down to me is that simple part. It's it's the mentality. And I'm not sure we know where Arsenal is right now. They had that run where things went really poorly. They've won a couple games since then. But, I mean, against teams you'd expect them to win. And this seems like something that can either bolster you back into the title race or torpedo your entire season to lose at home to Liverpool, who's only lost once this year. Yeah, pretty incredible, right, um, Andy, when we think about... You know, we all thought Arsenal were going to be the ones to to challenge Man City for the title, but it really does look like Liverpool are going to be there. Um, but that said, a win in this game, like Nick said, it's so monumental that momentum can swing, things can change very quickly, mm -hmm. especially at this time of the season. But Arsenal, they, they kind of have that that nasty edge and streak back to them in recent weeks. They had a, obviously a disappointing end to 2023, but they've kind of got, you know, a bit of a... <laughs> Just I, I I like what they're doing in terms of after the game against Forrest, Zinchenko and Ben White are going at each other because they let in a late goal. Arteta's lauding yeah. that. That's what you need, right? You see that at Man City. You've yeah. seen that at Liverpool over the years. Um, and then you have Gabby Jesus turning on absolute skill to score and set up a goal for Saka. And they have those attacking players clicking. They didn't get the, the big striker they needed in January. But it feels like there's enough there for Arsenal to really maybe kick on again now in this title race and say that that wobbly period at the end of 2023, that's all it was. It's not going to define the season. And um, this feels huge, this game, if they can win at the weekend. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that both of you have said there. The the, the opportunity to jump or re-jumpstart, I, I guess, their season and, and, and a title hope, uh, you know, with just a little bit less than, than half the season still to go, they've been... They, they've been so good at periods this season, and then they've been really poor at, at other periods as well. It's been a bit of a mixed bag uh, from Arsenal this season, but the one kind of constant and, and stabilizing factor in that team, uh, it's been Declan Rice, and, and he's been incredible for them, and I think he is a part of what you were kind of just talking about there, Joe. Uh, raising the you know, expectation is the right word, but the standard that they each hold themselves to and each other to consistency uh, in, right it's about consistency a little bit yeah right? yeah that, that that's that would, that would be a good word as well because they have i mean for years they've been you know when, when they're at their best they can beat any team in the world but when they don't show up they could be beaten by any team in league two uh you know on, on a given day so it's just uh you never know what you're going to quite get for them and and i was looking at this matchup and, and thinking about jurgen klopp leaving and kind of the 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 project that's going to be there for the next liverpool manager and thinking about those two things, Liverpool and Declan Rice, timing. How perfect would it have been if he was looking to move a year later in the summer coming up? He would be that perfect figure in the Liverpool midfield. Um, and, and so that feels a bit like, I don't know, maybe a bit of a swing back Arsenal's direction where, where you might look at Liverpool. Arsenal and say, well, Liverpool, they've been there. They know what it takes. They'll get it done. Uh, Declan Rice just has that that it factor doesn't he and and so i think he gives him a chance in this game to slow liverpool down just a little bit uh make it a little bit uglier uh, of a game i think is something that they will have to do they will have to show uh that they know how to kind of battle through for 90 minutes um and, and maybe steal a result at the end and nick we saw that just before christmas right when they played at anfield these two and declan rice was superb and to andy's point there he stopped uh, Liverpool really being that ruthless and getting big chances on the counter-attack. He'd always just pop up and be covering and shielded the back four pretty superbly on that occasion. So I think 
midfield, right? The revamps for both. If, if Alexis McAllister looks like he's going to be fit to play, so that's great news for Liverpool and how he's given them a different dimension and their whole midfield dimension has changed. And then how, as Andy said, Declan Rice has given Arsenal that extra solidity and consistency in the engine room there. That's like you mentioned it right at the start. Midfield's going to be key in this one. Yeah, I mean, Sobosly is such a special player as well, kind of an all-action guy. Um, I still don't know that it, it still feels like they're trying to shoehorn experience in there for Jones and Elliott. Um, like it's, it, it's, what was the, what was the movie you're trying to make fetch happen? Right. Like that, it feels like that's, uh, was it mean girls? Am I right? Or it's, it's, that's what it feels like to me. I, I, I keep thinking they're missing a piece, but then I think back to no Van Dyke and no Salah in that game at, at Arsenal and they have a chance to Liverpool has a chance to beat Arsenal twice in, in a month. And that yeah. would be so detrimental to them. And I think mm. Arsenal needs this moment. Joe. Yeah. They need Rice and Odegaard and Saka uh, and everybody to come together. And what scares me is they weren't terrible against Liverpool in that game, but what didn't they have and what do they still not have? A striker. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like that's what it's going to come down to. We know Nunez or Diaz or Jota are going to get their chances. The only guy we know is going to get his chances is Saka and he's been more serviceable as a provider at times. So Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that the cutting edge, the cutting edge can be there for Arsenal. It is there most games for Liverpool. And they're coming off a game against Chelsea where they out attempted them 28 to four. And so this is a, just a big moment for Arsenal to prove where they are. Yeah. And it was a big moment for Liverpool to prove where they are after the Jurgen Klopp news. I mean, it seems like the players are really handling it very well um you know this is a bit of a doubt with a knock he took um so I have to keep an eye on that but him diaz jota has been key and missing mohammed salah of course they're missing him of course you can't replace that player andy but um feel pretty good about liverpool heading into this game especially when obviously they won in the fa cup at arsenal as nick mentioned just uh, a month ago so they're going into it with a lot of confidence and those attacking players especially jota feels like he loves playing against Arsenal and he can just pick those little pockets in between the centre backs. And it's a good matchup for Liverpool. Yeah, Jota has been incredible the last, what, couple months or so since he came back from injury. He has been, I, I mean, they're a team they've lost once, this, and emphatically, by the way. It was very undoubted, no questions about it. The one game they lost, they lost, absolutely. Um, but he has, he sure. has carried them. Uh, even when Salah was there uh, for a few games, it was kind of the Jota show, and, and I think that's really important for Liverpool, by the way, because we have talked in the past about, you know, well, if, if a team can either take Mohamed Salah out of the game or you look longer term when he's eventually gone, what is going to be the succession plan? And obviously now the Klopp situation is thrown into that. But to have someone else step up in that way, and, and, and if they miss Nunez, that would, that would be massive in, in this game because I think they have for a couple of seasons now kind of been missing that... Uh, the tip of the spear, the focal point of the attack, somebody that everybody can kind of play uh, around, maybe not to the center forward, but they can play around and off of him uh, in a way that they've not been able to do in the middle of the field. Like so much of what they do starts out on the wing and they cut inside and, and they find those little half spaces in the channels and, and, and they score incredible goals. But in terms of being able to consistently generate uh, high quality scoring chances, having someone there that can occupy one or both center backs at, at a given time, especially with Arsenal, the way that they play, uh, would be, I, I think it would be a no-brainer if, if Nunez is going to be available for this game. Um, and so it makes it a bit of a coin flip for me if he's not. Yeah, totally. And I think you know, Nick mentioned it um, at the very top there in terms of Liverpool and they know that they're going to go out there and score goals and they know they're going to be lethal and mm -hmm. Be direct and we, we just don't know that with Arsenal Mikel Arteta has been talking ahead of this game being like I believe in my players that are here because he was asked again what are you disappointed you didn't get a new striker in January and it's believing hoping but Liverpool's different they're at that different level in the final third and I think that's what is the difference here and that's why my score prediction for this game I'm going for a pretty big win for Liverpool I'm going 3-1 to Liverpool um I see them rolling right now and just I think the Klopp announcement has given them an extra a gear and an extra level to say, you know what, we're going to do it for this guy. We're all here because of him. And let's finish off strong. So, Nick, what about your prediction, mate? 
Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna use pretty bold words here. I think this is it for Arsenal's season. Ooh. I think this is it. Oh no, I'm I'm sorry. It can go either way. It can go either way. Uh, unfortunately, I'm pick, predicting the Liverpool to win. I'll go two one instead of three one. But if um, if you can't, if the Emirates doesn't, they're gonna come out behind Arsenal. It's gonna be a fantastic vibe. Don't yes. get me wrong. But if it doesn't go their way. Um, at home for the second time in a month to Liverpool and you drop what eight points behind them forget it and yeah. they're not I mean they're still in the Champions League I think we could all agree that they could with a puncher's chance but they're not a favorite this is that's it for trophies I think if you don't win this game and that's a lot of pressure so let's see what happens yeah let's see what happens Andy prediction yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the exact same score as Nick I'll go 2-1 to Liverpool and and I don't, I don't want to build too much on what he just said there, but I do think if if that is kind of the way that this season goes for them, I do think that maybe in the summer there's some questions about, okay, this group specifically, we know that they're young and everything, and the manager, and what is their ceiling? Can they actually go on and do it? Because it'll be multiple seasons in a row that they've been in it, but just... I mean, by the end, they're not in it, and 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 I think that, that I think that we have to remember that that but like I don't know the, to start so well in the season and then fade the way that they have now, kind of two seasons in a row. It's it's a big red flag to me. It is. Let's see if the red flags will be waving in celebration at the weekend and the Arsenal end and the the home end because we'll be there. Pro Soccer Talk will be on site. We'll have analysis, reaction, and much more from North London. And of course, head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for how to watch information, live analysis during the game. We'll have you covered. It's going to be a good one, Nick and Andy. Cannot wait for this one between Arsenal and Liverpool. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.